Never heard a sermon on this, and I've never preached a sermon on this, uh, but I'm going to preach on dumb prayers in the Bible. Proverbs 28, we'll start there this evening. I read you part of that letter this guy wrote me. I want you all to pray for him. Uh, a young man in England called me uh, last night, two hours from London, England. And it's just, we're really burdened for that young man, 24 years old, uh, going through some real hard problems, so y'all pray for him. He probably will, will hear this, so uh, uh, let's remember him in prayer. Proverbs 28, and look at verse number 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. When I announced the title of this sermon, Dumb Prayers, some of y'all might have thought it might have been a little strong. And that's sort of strong language, calling somebody a uh, prayer dumb. Well, God said, worse than that. He says, abomination. That's worse. So the Lord said, there's certain types of praying that is an abomination. We think of abomination as some horrible, un un terrible sin. And God said some prayers were abomination. So let's look at this little truth tonight. Way back in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 26... The Bible said, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Ever since then, there's been praying going on in this world. Can you imagine how many prayers is prayed in the world? I mean, there's 7 billion people on this planet. And most of them are religious. And some of them, are not, they're not saved, but they're religious. Of all the tribes in the jungle and all the prayers over in Rome and Iraq and Iran and the Wailing Wall, and, Jeru and then, of course, the United States, people who don't, some know God, some that don't, all the prayers that's going on. I picked out four. There's probably more in the Bible, but I picked out four that I'd like to show you tonight that are dumb prayers. If you're going to pray, at least get it right and accomplish something. Uh, you might, if, if dumb's a little strong for you, you might could say wasted, wasted words when people pray them. Take your Bible first and turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. Way back yonder in the Old Testament. And we'll look in 1 Kings chapter number 18 this evening. And this is the story of Elijah and the contest there uh, with the prophets of Baal. Baal, the false god of the Old Testament, is here prayed to. And I want you to notice what they said here in, uh, in, the, in the Word of God. Elijah told them in verse 21 of chapter 18 not to halt too, um, anymore between two opinions. He said, if God's God, follow him. If Baal's God, follow him. Uh, and the people answered him not a word. So then they, they tried to uh, uh, make a big deal here, and they begin to worship. And look at verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first. For ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Now, he said, the God that answers by fire, we're going to let that be the real God. Dumb prayer number one, verse 26. Look at it. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal. There it is. From morning even till noon, they got out at 12 o'clock on the dot. Wonder where that comes from. They were out from morning till noon. That's where the church gets out at 12. Uh, and they were calling on a false god, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. Nobody answered. Verse 27, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Oh my goodness, what a, what a mean, judgmental, narrow-minded person Elijah was. And he said, cry out, for he's a God. Either he's talking or he's pursuing or he is in a journey. You shall read that in the living Bible. And peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets until the blood gushed out. These nuts 
were jumping around on this altar. Now, I don't know exactly how they did, but I'm going to show you. They put this, they put this uh, holy place there. They put this sacrifice right there. And they said, all right, our God's real. And Elijah said, well, call on him. Let's see if he's real. And they said, oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. And, and nothing didn't happen. And they said, well, well, hey, hit that button over there. Hit that button over there. And then somebody went, You could hear that bass all over the camp. And you could feel it in your stomach right here. And they started going, oh, and, uh, and they're coming out, and Beyonce was out there, and Kanye, and hey, all them, here come Lady Doo-Doo. And, and next thing you know, there was, hey, was everybody and their grandma was out there dancing around. And Elijah said, where's he at? How come your God can't hear you? Now, you know as well as I know, that was a wasted prayer to Baal. Amen? You might as well, what would you think about me tonight if I got around and jumped around up here and I said, oh, piano, hear us. Oh, piano, hear us. And I started cutting myself. What would you think? He's, he's finally, he's finally, check him in over there on the hill. Somebody call over and get him a room. You get $50. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. Uh, uh, listen, that piano could hear you as quick as Bell could. That piano's no God. That pew, oh, pew, hear us. Oh, pew, listen, there's people all over this world tonight calling on gods that are no gods. That's a mighty dumb prayer. And you know what? It reminds me of the, uh, the monks. I don't know if you've ever read about all those Catholic monks and all those, all, those, all those many, many, many years. They live in what's called monasteries. We call that a home for unwed fathers. And, they, and they, in these monasteries, uh, all these guys, they, uh, they live there and they wear these monk suits and everything. And, and their idea is like that when they cut themselves. That's a sign of demon possession. That ain't the way to get your prayers answered. And they started cutting themselves like that. And they were emos. They were cutters. And the Bible said they started cutting until the blood gushed out. Isn't it amazing how up to date that old outdated archaic King James Bible is? Isn't it amazing how it sheds light on the newspapers of the New York Times in 2017? Isn't it amazing how that old book right there nails it down just right? And boy, they jumped around there and they screamed and hollered and the next thing you know, that nothing happened and nothing happened. Those monks, you know, they were sitting in swamps. Them people would sit in a swamp for 10, 15 years and it'd sit there on a log and let mosquitoes bite them all day. And their, their thinking is, if I can punish my flesh, I can keep it from sinning and God will bless me because of the discipline of my flesh. And, and that ain't the way to get your prayers answered. Uh, they said there, there's monks. They had these two monks over there in uh, one of those monasteries and they were in cells and they had a chain. One of them had a chain right here and it ran all the way through a hole in the cell and his buddy over there had a chain and their wrists were chained together. And they made a covenant of adoration. That meant one of them had to be adoring and praying at all times. So when one of them went to sleep, he'd jerk it, and the other one would pray and say, Oh God, oh God, hear us, oh God, hear us, oh God, hear us. And then finally, the next day, he'd jerk that chain, and he'd wake up, Oh God, hear us, oh God, hear us. They finally found them both dead, and their skeletons laying there, and that chain still had them up. Now, I'm going to tell you this evening, God did not hear one Word, them guys said. You say, that's pretty harsh, preacher. It sure, you don't think these people were sincere? You don't think they were sincere? Cut themselves with lancets and, and jerk the blood out of them? You better believe they were sincere. But God did not hear one word they said. Oprah Winfrey, as I told you this morning, she said, she said that whatever you might call God and whatever you might call God, you can be in South America, you can be in the, in the jungle of, of, of somewhere in the Sahara Desert, you can be up in Russia and Siberia, you can be in Canada. Whatever you might call God is your path to God and as long as you follow that light that you have, you'll wind up. Now, according to this, according to this, Elijah said, call on him. Let's see if he'll get you anywhere. The Bible 
Bible says, teaches there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Are you telling me, Brother Danny, that everybody in the world, all those Hindus and all those Buddhists and all those Muslims that pray in another name, God's not listening? That's exactly what I'm telling you. It's a wasted prayer. It's a foolish prayer. It's a dumb prayer. Elijah said, what's this? All these dumb prayers I'm going to show you are followed by a good prayer except for one. And verse number uh, on down there, the Bible said Elijah began to call. And verse 40, 41, 42, uh, you know what he did? He prayed 18 words and the fire fell. Elijah didn't jump around. Elijah didn't scream that I know of. Elijah didn't cut himself. He said, oh, Lord God of Israel, show them that you're God today. Bam! The fire fell, and Brother licked up the water that was in the trough, and he looked up the sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, the false prophets of Baal prayed a dumb prayer. Number two. Let me show you another one. Take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter 5. Uh, this jumped out at me the other day. Oh, it's always bothered me, and I, I never did it, what I'm doing tonight. But let's look at it. Here we show you a dumb prayer. Mark chapter number 5. Here in Mark chapter 5, a great miracle had just occurred. The Lord had cast demons out of this man and uh, that nobody could tame. Nobody couldn't do nothing with him. And he really like got saved. That boy got saved. And it's just like today, the Lord would get a hold of a young man's heart and change him and save him and the whole community would know about it. That's what it's like. I, when I got saved, my community found out about it. Everybody in our community knew about me and Nebo. They knew me from, from basketball uh, the year before. Our 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 uh, high school team, we won our, our county championship, then we won our district championship, and that sent us to the state playoffs. Never before had that little school did that, and because of that, we got a lot. A uh, man called me from the newspaper the other day, wanting to do a story on our old basketball team, and I got the old video and watched it. Well, I, I'm shooting a bunch of free throws and stuff, so it's funny looking, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I uh, uh, was there, and people knew. When I got saved, people knew it. And when this boy got saved, people knew it. But look what happened. I want to show you something in verse number 16. They all come to Jesus. They, the people that fed the swine fled, and they told all kind of crazy stuff. And verse 15, it said, They come to Jesus and see him that was past tense, possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, and they shouted and praised God. No. What does it say? They were afraid. Now, look at verse 17. And they begin to pray him to depart out of their coast. There's a dumb prayer, people. They were praying for Jesus to leave. They begin to pray him, depart. Uh, anybody got any special prayer requests? Yes, please pray that Jesus will leave here. Why? Well, that guy that was demon-possessed, have you seen him? He's got weird. He's wearing clothes. He's carrying a Bible. I think he's lost his mind. And you know, there was 2,000 pigs up there. We was getting ready to make a lot of money off them. Thanksgiving's coming up. And all them hams out there. And I mean, hit me in the pocketbook. And uh, he, he uh, and, and, and they heard him. And they said, look, we don't want this. We don't, that's the greatest miracle ever happened in this place. And they said, this, this makes us feel uncomfortable. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the same response you get in a lot of churches. When God really starts moving and starts blessing, you watch that religious crowd. They'll say, we don't want this. We don't want, every time I've ever been in a real revival, a lot of the older and sometimes younger, self-righteous, satisfied, people said we don't want this when I got saved up yonder there was some people there was young people come in every service I mean you talking about the Lord casting out demons he did it and I mean every service somebody else gets saved somebody else gets saved brother gets saved bring mama she gets saved bring there was people bringing their school teachers to church in the middle of the day public school and praying and and, and the teachers were letting them out of class uh, early to come up to the church and pray and I'm telling you 
some of those folks said uh, they begin to pray him to depart out of our coast. Uh, they started here. The statement was made. They said uh, these young people are ruining everything. They're turning our nice church into some kind of cult. And listen, that the Holy Ghost is moving like he hadn't in probably a hundred years in that community. And the people thought they didn't like it. You'd be surprised. If God the Holy Ghost sent a revival in the average Baptist church in this town, lost half the people wouldn't like it. That's how messed up we are. If Jesus came and the power of God fell and people started getting saved, they'd be critical of it. It happened at Robbinsville. It happened down there in Alabama when I had that revival down there at Brandon Bruce's church. We had mamas mad as fire. We had a lady come in there one night and we've been getting saved, you know, people can get saved right and left. We had uh, the church packed full at 1 o'clock in the morning. 1 o'clock in the morning. They had, um, what did they call that? They had that is after the football game? What do you, you call it? Something. After, huh? Fifth quarter, yeah. At the football game on Friday night, they said, we're going to have church. And everybody filled in, piled, piled in there about 10 o'clock, about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. That place was packed full, and mamas was sitting out in the car waiting on their teenagers to come out. And I mean, I just, I just, I just preach just like I always do. And I mean, it's just like you struck a match in that place. The choir was full, people was crying, and I showed videos. I preached everything I know to preach. And there's a woman come in there one night, and she said, uh, are you the preacher? I said, I am a preacher. Uh, are, are you the one preaching? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I need to talk to you. I said, oh, boy, here we go. We went to office and sat down. She sat down across from me. She said, I just want to ask you something. I said, yes, ma'am. What can I help you with? She said, my son come home the other night and was talking this, this, I don't know what he's talking about. He was talking about something where they, they drilled a hole into hell. And they, and they, he said, what is that? And I said, oh, boy, you know that sermon I preached about where they drilled up yonder in Siberia and they heard, I, and I said, I didn't say that was true, ma'am. I said it is scriptural. Whether that story is true or not, I don't know. But I know one thing, what, what it is true that there is a hell and it is down there and there are people screaming in it. And she just, she just, she was just all two pieces. She just thought, well, how, I cannot believe you're telling these kids uh, that there's really a hell and all that. And you know what? They begin to pray him to depart out of their coast. Lord, have mercy, people. It don't get good all the time. When it does, for heaven's sake, don't buck it. When it does, for heaven's sake, don't stay home. When it does, get in on it. Don't try to explain it away. Lord, have mercy, brother. Get in on it. Now, there's a good prayer to this one, just like Elijah prayed a good prayer. In Mark 14, Jerry, uh, when they heard that Judas was betraying the Lord, it said they were glad. There's another dumb one. That's not one of my points. But it said they were glad. When they heard Judas had betrayed the Lord, the Bible said they are glad. That's how messed up people be. But the good prayer is, verse 22, Jairus came and brought his daughter and greatly besought him that he'd come and heal his daughter. There's a good one. After every one of these dumb prayers, there's a good prayer. So the prayer of praying the Lord will leave you alone. Billy Sunday had that. D.L. Moody had that. You know, the movie they made on Elmer Gantry was a mockery of Billy Sunday and his ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a mighty dumb prayer. You know what they should have said? Lord, I'm glad the demons went in them pigs. Lord, I'm glad. I'm happy for what you've done for this boy. Help me. Help my family. That's what they should have said. But they prayed. He would have, All you parents here, let me give you a little advice. If God ever gets on your kids... And they start wanting to go on visitation. And they start wanting to do something for God. For heaven's sake, let them go. We was going to give out tracts one night when I first got saved. We went to this boy's house. And because his mama wasn't going to let him go, he said, come and ask my mom. She ain't going to let me go. We went in and asked her. We said, can your son go visiting with us? And she was a preacher's wife. And she looked at me and she said, now, Danny, you can carry this too far. Her son won't give out tracks. Played in a rock band before that. Got right with God. We was going to trade the truck stop Nebo, only place in town open, around where we live, and give out tracks. 
We'd take us a handful of tracks and we'd jump up there on them stools beside them truck drivers and say, hey, doing there? And witness to them. And I was 18 years old. And it was fun. That's what some of you 18-year-olds need to be doing. Amen? And some of you 50-year-olds and 40-year-olds, that's what you need to be doing. Get you some tracks and witness. But I know you've done grown beyond that and you're too mature. Uh, but I'm telling you something, brother. Listen, we sit there and we, we would witness. And that woman told me, she said, Danny, she said, you can carry this too far. And he can't go. I said, okay. Well, long after that, he's out playing in a rock band again, all messed up. And the story got worse that I won't go into tonight. But I'm telling you tonight, brother, that's the biggest mistake they ever made in their life. Get out of here. Leave us alone. We don't want you around here. Listen, if God... I know parents that get under conviction when their kid gets right with God because their kid preaching to them all the time. Woo! You ought to thank God they ain't out there in sin somewhere. Praise. Hey, listen, I told a lady sitting right back there, they're not here now. I told a lady here the other Sunday, she got little kids like that and they love church. I said, if I had two kids that little wanting to come to church all the time, I'd never miss a service. I told her right back there at the nursery door. And I mean it. If you've got a kid that wants to come to church, for heaven's sake, get in there and get behind them and serve God. Number three, take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 18. I'll show you another dumb prayer in the Bible. Luke chapter number 18, and we'll look at verse number 11. This was a dumb one. This old boy had no clue what in the world he was saying. Two guys went to church one day, and the Bible said in verse 10, Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood in verse 11 and prayed thus with himself. Now listen to this prayer. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. That is a dumb prayer. Before I read the rest of it, that is a dumb attitude. God's not going to help you if you've got this attitude of, boy, I'm glad I'm not like them. You're really not like them. You're way worse. That's why God heard this other fellow's prayer and didn't even listen to him. God never heard one word that fellow said. Listen, people, there's prayers all over this county every Sunday morning, and God don't hear a word of it. This bad is prayer... Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this another beautiful Sabbath morn. We thank Thee. We pray for all. The, and the Lord said, hmm, anybody want to pray? I'll listen. If anybody down there. And he looks down there and sees somebody down there saying, oh, God, I'm a low-down dog. And he'll listen to them. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's read, read the rest of this prayer. Read the rest of this. You want to get help from God? This is not the way to pray. And the publican stand, I'm sorry, the Pharisee stood and prayed, God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now, you, you make, make a big mistake when you start coming to God, bragging on yourself about how great and wonderful you are and all the stuff you don't do. Lord, you know I'm trying to live for you the best I can. Lord, I'm glad that I'm not out here drunk like some of these people. I'm not out here like some of these people. I'm not like some of these people. And I, the Lord don't even hear. That's a dumb prayer. I don't care how right with God you are. I don't care how long it's been since you smoked a joint. I don't care how long it's been since you committed adultery. What, it don't matter, brother. I tell you what you better do. You better hit your knees and you better say, God, I am a sinner. God, I don't deserve one thing you've ever done for me. He, he said, I, I had not committed adultery. I kind of doubt that. I fast twice of the week. You just lost your reward. If you fast and brag about it, you don't get no credit for it, no way. The Lord, uh, so the Lord, he said, I fast twice a week. And the Lord said, well, scratch that. You, well, you might have got a blessing back if you went around bragging about it. One guy came in one time and said, I can't, I'm fasting. Well, you don't get nothing. When you fast, you stand up straight and smile. And brush your teeth so your breath won't stink. Them Altoids taste good when you're fasting, let me tell you. They like a piece of steak. <laughs> and and, and so, so you want to appear on the men to fast. 
That's right. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall what? Reward you openly. But if you're out there, this big break. So this old preacher went to preach one time. I forgot which one it was. One of them old great men. And they said, a, a, a deacon over here. He said, deacon over here. He said, you lead us in prayer. And that guy stood up and he said, our heavenly father, we thank thee for this another Sabbath day, which is not, you know, but they think it is. And we pray. Put, he went through this Sunday morning prayer. And he said, he said, amen. And that preacher looked down at him and he said, your heart is cold as a block of ice. What a revival that was. Killed it better than four o'clock. Wasn't nothing to kill. I'm telling you, he's, don't brag to God. Lord, I've done my part. Now, for some of you, that translates as this. I have heard people say this. I've had people say this to me recently. Brother Danny, I'm trying to live right. Why has this happened? You can't have no attitude like that. What you're saying is, I'm living so good, God shouldn't let something like this happen to me. That's the wrong attitude, y'all. Don't have no attitude like that. Listen, it don't matter what happens to you. It, it's better than what you deserve. Hey, could it be something from way back down the road? Could it be you're reaping the sins of your youth? I don't know. But don't ever have this attitude of, God, here I am trying to live right, and look what you let happen to me. That's a wrong attitude. That's a dumb prayer. You better say, Lord, I know I deserve it. I know I deserve it. Thy will be done. If you can help me through this, by your grace, I want to make it through. Look at the next prayer. There's always a good prayer right after them dumb prayers. Look at the good one. And the publican, standing afar off, he wouldn't even come close, would not so much as lift up his eyes to heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Here's the way that guy did. He smote his breath like that, and he wouldn't even look up. He said, man, the Lord could kill me. I ain't looking at him. Just went like that. He said, I'm not getting over there. And, and I'm just going to hit myself right here and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the Lord looked down and said, that right there is a man I want right there. You're right, you're wrong. You go home, you still got your sins. You go home, his sin is forgiven. The dumb prayer got ignored. The good prayer got answered. Listen, people, let me give you some good advice. Always, always come to the Lord with a humble heart saying, Lord, I don't deserve nothing. By your grace is the only thing that's good about me. There ain't nothing good about me. I, I'd be in a hell this, this evening if it was not for his mercy and for his grace. And may God help me and have mercy on me. You better have that attitude. Be, be yourself is the worst advice you can give some people. Look at this little girl. She's praying. And she said, um, they said she's praying, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And they said, what are you doing, girl? And she said, I can't remember my prayers, and I'm just saying the whole alphabet and tell the Lord he can just take it and mean whatever he wants it to mean. That's a good prayer. That's a good prayer. For the Bible said the Spirit <whistles> and showers of blessings. Rained on Trump the other day. They said that was a blessing. Huh? They said, uh, he said, uh, the little girl said, fill it in, Lord. And the Bible said the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. The, the, the prayer is not from your lips. It's from your heart. It's from your heart. It's from your heart. It's from your heart. Amen? Sometimes when bad things happen, people say, well, I'm trying to do right. Look what God, listen, he who thinks himself is good for everything is usually good for nothing. The smallest package is a man who's wrapped up in himself. Amen? Number four, and I'm done. Number four, and I'm done. Here's a dumb prayer, and it's so sad. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. The man, the rich man in hell. The Bible said there, in Luke chapter 16, Verse number 23, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue. I am tormented in this flame. Ladies and gentlemen, the rich man in hell prayed a dumb prayer. 
First of all, it was the wrong time. Too late. You know when the time to stay out of hell praying is? Now. You know if you're here tonight and you don't know you're saved, are you listening? If you don't know you're saved here tonight, you know when you better pray to stay out of hell? Now. You don't want to go to hell. Nobody, you don't want to go to hell. If you've got a brain in your head, you don't want to go to hell. They burn in hell. You never get out. He waited until it's too late and said, Father Abraham, wrong time. And then... It was the wrong person. Father Abraham couldn't help him. Father Abraham couldn't help him on this side, let alone that side. You can't pray to Father Abraham. He can't hear you. And if he could, he couldn't get you out of hell. It was the wrong person. Brother, it was a wasted prayer. And then it was the wrong prayer. You know what he prayed? 